Hello everyone and welcome back to the space where we say that I can sleep. It is now the end of June and we're coming up onto July, July 4th. And honestly, for this week, I hope you all please stay cool because I'm not sure how the temperature and weather is going to be like for you guys for this week, but it is going to be 100 for me at least every single day this week. So I am very, very scared. So please stay cool and take care of yourselves, okay? But as for now, let's enjoy ourselves, enjoy our reading and relax. As per usual, if you are enjoying my readings and would like for me to continue doing the readings, you can show your support by leaving me likes, sharing my stuff, leaving me comments, and following me on my platforms like Spotify at I Can Sleep, YouTube at I Can Win, TikTok at I Can Win, and Instagram at officially.icanwin. Now let's begin our ascension into part 2 of chapter 38 of Heaven Officials Blessings. From the earth of Buyu Forest, human face disease emerges. That word appeared in his mind, but he immediately blocked it out. You used your divinity to interfere in mortal matters, the state preceptor added. You've completely appended The predetermined fate of the kingdom of Shenle made a complete and utter mess. For the sake of balance, nature will breed things to bring everything you've derailed back on track. I don't know what that creature is, but I am certain it was born because of you. Shilin's poise faltered. The state preceptor continued. I am also certain that, should the heavenly emperor see you, he will tell you the same thing, because this was the reason he didn't want you to descend in the first place. But I feel that even if he told you then, you would have most likely come down anyway. <sighs> Young people are like this, unheeding of advice. They won't believe they can't walk until they've fallen. You're saying that I'm the cause of human face disease? Shillian was in disbelief. By that logic, with the so-called predetermined fate, everything that uncrying, unlaughing creature does is my fault? So, the upper court won't even bother with this? You can think of it that way, the state preceptor acknowledged. But that's not altogether correct either. If you must track things to their origin, you could also blame your father and your mother. If they didn't give birth to you, then you wouldn't have ascended, and therefore, you wouldn't have descended. By that reasoning, you could blame your entire Shenle ancestry. Assigning fault is meaningless. As for your last question, that's right, they won't. Because the kingdom of Shenle was destined to fall, since you reached out your hand and flipped the board, there will surely be another hand to set right all the game's upset pieces. Shillian drew in a deep breath, not wanting to discuss whether the kingdom of Shinla was destined to fall. He closed his eyes for a minute, then asked, So answer me, state preceptor. If I disappear now, would that creature also disappear? I'm afraid not, the state preceptor replied. Easy to come, hard to go. Whether it's a god, ghost, or demon, it's all the same. Shilian nodded. Fine, he said rigidly. Thank you, State Preceptor, for your guidance. Shilian knew any more talk would be pointless. The only one he could rely on to keep fighting was himself. He bowed to the State Preceptor, bidding him farewell, and prepared to leave. Behind him, the State Preceptor called out, Your Highness! How do you plan on walking your path from now on? Shilin had his head down. Since my disappearance would change nothing, I will fight to the end. That is my only path. After a pause, he raised his head high and clearly enunciated every word. Be it a hand or something else, I don't care. The people I protect will never become its pawn. 
Two weeks later, Long Ying led the Yang'an army in another attack. After months of countless battles, big and small, the Yang'an troops could now finally be called an army. They were no longer refugee brigands, but a proper army with considerable strength. It was as if Lang Ying had evaporated from the mortal realm for a long time, and having waited for so long, when Xilian saw this man again on the battlefield, he didn't waste a moment. He dashed straight past the troops to face him, swinging down with his sword as he shouted. Where's that white clothed man? Lang Ying blocked his attack and didn't answer, fighting back seriously. Shilian pressed him with each move he made. You know who I'm talking about. My patience is limited. Unexpectedly, Lang Ying stared at him and asked, Your Highness, didn't you say it would continue to rain in Yang'an? Shilian hadn't expected him to ask that question. Startled, the words got stuck in his throat. I... He did indeed promise Lang Ying that Yang'an would have rain. However, in recent days, the number infected by the human face disease within the capital had increased exponentially. At this point, there were almost 500. Those 500 victims couldn't all be settled in Buyu Forest, as the quarantine camp was running out of space. The government officials were debating a move to a bigger place farther away. Most of Shilian's power was being used to relieve the symptoms of those 500 people, and he had nothing left to create rain in Yang'an. Since he couldn't make use of the Rainmaster's hat, he felt bad keeping someone else's spiritual device. With no other options, he sent Fang Shen to the kingdom of Yuxi to return it and give his thanks. Shilian struck again, yelling angrily, I created that rain! Don't you have any clue why it stopped? The angrier he was, the calmer Lang Ying became. That has nothing to do with me. I only know that, even without human face disease, your powers won't last for long. Just like how even with your reign, not many will survive in Yang'an. It's all pointless. Your Highness, why do you think you can achieve anything you want to do? Rather than putting my fate in your hands, I choose to put it in my own. Something from that speech provoked Shilian, and his intent to kill flared. His blade turned slightly, and he raised his left palm. A voice screamed inside his head. Kill this man, and the remnants of the Yang'an army will be nothing to be afraid of. Throughout all their past meetings, this was the very first time Shilian had steeled his heart to kill Lang Ying. When he delivered a blow from his palm to Lang Ying's chest, the man spat blood from the strike, but the concussive blast did not penetrate his heart. Instead, it repelled a shockwave. Stricken by that shock? Stricken with that shock, Shilian couldn't believe it. He backed away a few steps. You? Shilian knew very well what had shocked him back. When those who were destined for greatness in the mortal realm, kings, geniuses, and heroes of chivalry, encountered a dire situation, their bodies would naturally radiate a protective aura to shield them from harm. Most of them had the potential for ascension. Long Ying was no more than a boot. Yet, he radiated that protective spiritual aura, and it was even an exceedingly rare one. The aura of a king. Shilian didn't dare to think deeply about what that meant, and he suddenly felt his heart go cold. The chill was from Lang Ying's sword, which had impaled him through the chest. In that battle, there was no victory or defeat on either side. Many still perished on Yang An's side, but this time, Shen Le didn't fare any better. If it were anyone else, they could say it was a hard-won battle, but to Xilian, this was definitely a defeat. It was the first time he had been at a disadvantage, 
and although Lan Ying was still no match for Shi Lian and retreated with injuries in the end, many witnessed Lan Ying stabbing him. Shi Lian could guess that many soldiers were now talking behind his back. His Highness is a martial god. How could he be stabbed? Aren't we the army of God? Why wasn't this another overwhelming victory? However, Shi Lian had absolutely no time for such insignificant noise. Mu Qing had informed him that today, another hundred some human face disease patients had been sent to Buyu Forest. One short day, and over a hundred! The condition of the first group of human face disease victims had worsened severely. There was not a single spot on their bodies that wasn't affected, and they had to be covered in thick white sheets lest they scare people. However, even though, even through the covers, the contour of those bumps could still be seen. Shilian moved through the camp to help alleviate symptoms, and when he finally finished one round, Fang Shen pulled him aside. Your Highness, what happened on the battlefield today? He asked in a low voice. How could you get stabbed by that boar? You struck him so many times, why didn't you just kill him? Shilian didn't want to tell him that there was now a king's aura on Lang Ying that not even heavenly officials could touch, so he only smiled wryly in response. It wasn't that he didn't want to kill him, it was that he could no longer kill him. All the spiritual power in his attacks was dissolved by that king's aura, and nothing worked against Lang Ying. When he realized this, he instantly switched to using his fists but that Lang Ying was thick-skinned and could withstand quite the beating. Just then, someone wailed from a distance away. Your Highness, save me! Xilin had accepted a bowl of water that Fang Xin passed to him, and that wail came just as he was taking his first sip. Xilin choked and didn't have the time to stop coughing before he rushed over. The one who had wailed was the young man who had given him that umbrella, and because Shilian was particularly gentle toward him, his cries for help were also particularly frequent. At first, the only part of this man that had grown a face was his knee. Shilian had used his power to stop the disease from spreading, so only his left leg had grown a face, nowhere else. But right now, he was madly kicking that leg and writhing. Shilian held him down and comforted. Don't move, I'm here. The young man was terrified to the core and grabbed on to him. Your Highness, Your Highness, save me. I felt an itch on my leg just now, like some weed was scratching me. But when I, when I looked down, I saw those things. Their mouths were opening and closing. M moving, they're moving. They're eating grass. They're alive. The hair on Shilin's neck raised instantly. He looked down, and sure enough, there were over a dozen faces tightly pressed together on the man's left leg. Many of the mouths were stuffed with grass, chewing, gnawing, as if they were starving. Many of the patients started screaming, and the crowd exploded in uproar. Feng Shen and the soldiers had to use force to subjugate them and prevent a riot. Xilin used a hand to hold the young man down and turned to someone beside him to ask, Does his leg still work? All the nursing staff at Buyu Forest wore full quarantine gear. They wrapped their whole bodies tightly in bandages and capes, making their faces unrecognizable in the process. One of the nurses answered him. His voice sounded like a boy's. No, your highness. His leg is already forfeit. We don't know what else is festering in there. The leg is heavy as a block of lead, and we could hardly move it. The infection's also climbing. Soon, it'll progress beyond the leg and reach his waist. Shilian had done his utmost to use his powers to heal these people. Yet the young man's leg had lost almost all normal function and was so obviously beyond saving. Your Highness, one of the doctors whispered. In my opinion, 
The only thing we haven't tried is cutting off the part with the faces. That might slow the spread. That was also the only uh, that was also the only solution Shenyan could think of. Then cut it off. No. The young man immediately cried. He was terrified of having his limb amputated, but at the same time he didn't dare hug his deformed leg, and he wept in pain. My leg's not forfeit. Maybe it'll get better, Your Highness. Don't you have any other way to save me? Shillian didn't want to answer with, I'll do my best or I'll try anymore. His sight was going dark and he replied, I'm sorry, I don't. It was the first time His Highness the Crown Prince had said such a thing and it shocked everyone present. There were some who lost it right then and there and started screaming, no? You're his highness! You're a god! How could you not have another way? We've been waiting for you to come up with something for days. How could you have nothing? The one who spoke was immediately silenced as they were shoved down by someone. But it wasn't function or Mooching. Mooching was silent and frowning, seeming like he thought Shilin's answer was too blunt and didn't comfort the crowd. Function, on the other hand, was further away, barking at some particularly rowdy patients. Shilin was battered and exhausted as of late, his unsheathed sword always hanging from his waist. When the blade came close to that grotesque leg, one of the faces felt the chill of the blade and suddenly stopped chewing. It opened its mouth and let out a shrill scream. That thing, auch that thing actually screamed. Although the sound was faint, it clearly came from the leg. The young man screamed as well, almost fainting from fright. He clung on to Shilian as he sobbed. Your Highness, save me! Save me! Right then, three shallow sores opened on his waist, close to his thigh. Your Highness, it's spreading! It's spreading! The doctor shouted in alarm. The infection is spreading from his leg. No matter how much spiritual power was spent, Shillian still could not control the young man's condition in the end. Those horrifying things were about to spread over his entire body. Once that happened, there would be no going back. Could they really do nothing but sit back and watch? Shillian gritted his teeth. Let me ask you something. Do you want this leg or not? I cannot guarantee what will happen once it is gone. If you do not want it, nod and we will operate immediately. If you want it, then do not nod and we will figure something out. That young man was breathing heavily. His eyes blank from terror. His mind lost. It was like he was nodding but also shaking his head. The faces on his left leg started screaming one by one as if welcoming their new companions. In between all the shrieks, the delight on their faces was apparent, and their little red tongues were quivering. It was hard to imagine what the insides of that young man's left leg looked like, just what it harbored within. This couldn't be delayed any further. Shilin instructed the doctor, cut it off. That doctor, however, waved his hand rapidly. Your Highness, forgive me. I'm not very sure either, and I don't dare operate in a place like this. If amputation doesn't guarantee anything, then we shouldn't take this risk. The doctor cursed himself for speaking up. The nail that stuck out got hammered down. And what was he doing fighting for such a frightful job? He escaped back into the crowd and stopped talking. The young man was mumbling over and over. Your Highness, save me. Your Highness, save me. Yet Chilean's mind was completely blank, and a hopeless voice mumbled inside of him. Who can come save me? There was chaos all around, 
screams and cries everywhere. Those twisted little faces squished below were wailing as well, and in that moment, Shilian thought he saw hell. It was like he was staring at hell without really seeing it. With cold sweat rolling, he widened his eyes and raised his arm. The sword slashed down and blood splattered. The young man was only half conscious at first, but he snapped awake and screamed wildly after Shilian cut his leg off. My leg! My leg! Shilian knelt in the pool of blood, doing his best to hold him down while his white robes were stained and mottled with blood. It's over! Doctors, stop his bleeding! The doctors present were flustered and forgot themselves. Mu Qing couldn't watch any longer. He stepped forward. Stop losing your heads! He took out a small medicine bottle, and from it flowed a faint smoke that slowly stopped the bleeding. Shilian also wrapped the wound with a layer of spiritual aura. As for that amputated leg, it lay on the ground all by itself. Suddenly, it quivered like a live creature, and it continued to squirm, even severed from its body. Shilin raised his hand, and a fire roared forth, torching the leg into nothing but black ash. My leg! Shilin checked his waist and saw that human face disease wasn't still festering. His eyes brightened and he said delightfully. His eyes brightened and he said delightedly. It's good. It stopped. It's not spreading. That young man finally stopped his tears and opened his eyes. Really? Is it really better? The people all sucked in a breath. Then the crowd began to stir. And after a moment of hesitation, someone shouted. Your Highness, please treat me too! A boy's voice rang out from not far away. Don't be so reckless! We can't be sure! What if he relapses? Thanks to that voice's reminder, Shilian calmed down too. That's right. Nothing is certain right now. We need some time to observe. Another piped up, their voice trembling with fear. How long do we need to observe? We, I can't wait any longer. If we keep waiting, this thing will spread to my face. Another just gave up altogether. I'm willing to take that chance. Soon, the hundreds within the Buyu forest grew unruly and noisy, all of them beseeching him. Your Highness, please, we beg you, relieve us of the suffering. The masses started prostrating toward him, worshipping Shilian at the center. Although he was in a difficult situation, Shilian didn't dare to be careless. Everyone, please get up first. If this man does not relapse after some time, I will do my utmost to treat everyone. It was a while before the people were comforted. After making many more promises and settling the young man with the amputated leg elsewhere, Shilian sat down under a tree. Mooching looked around before speaking in a low voice. How could you just chop off his leg? If the man himself didn't beg you to do it, don't just take the reins. What if it didn't work even after you amputated? You're the one he'd hate. Shilian's heart was still racing. With the hand covering his face, he croaked. It couldn't wait. He wouldn't answer me, and the doctor didn't dare to operate. I couldn't just stand by and watch the infections fester. Someone had to make a decision. I really... For once, Xin Lian. For once, Feng Shen looked worried. Your Highness, I think you'd better take a rest. You really don't look that good. We'll take over for you for the time being. Shilin felt like he couldn't hang on much longer. He nodded slowly. All right. I'll rest here for a bit. We'll be heading back soon, so don't go too far. 
There was another wail from within the forest, and Function and Mooching left to go check. Shilian sat there lost in a daze for a while, then lay down on the ground right there. In the past, if no one was around to build him a perfumed tent with a tusk bed, he would never have just lay on muddy ground out in the wild. Under the current circumstances, however, he really didn't have the energy to trouble any errand runners. He dropped his head and passed out. Dirty, still dirty and unkempt, the grime and blood on his robes left uncleansed. Shilian didn't know how much time had passed. He woke from his haze with a start when he heard Function calling for him, and he sat up immediately. When he did so, he felt something slip off him, and he looked down to find a patched, worn blanket. Someone must have covered him with it when he was resting. Shilin rubbed his forehead and spoke to the approaching Function. I don't need this. I don't need this. You can give it to the patients instead. Function was slightly taken aback. Huh? What do you mean? This blanket? That's not from me. I only just got here. Shilian turned his head. Was it you, Mooching? It wasn't me either, Mooching said. Maybe it was one of the devotees living in the camp who brought it to you. Shilian looked around but didn't see anyone worth noting. He shook his head, thinking. I didn't even sense anyone coming close. What a shameful state I'm in. He folded the blanket and laid it on the ground before rising to his feet. Let's go. Shilian left with a heavy heart, and very soon, the very thing he feared happened. Two days later, Shilian visited Buyu Forest again, and some of the doctors informed him of the issue. Around a dozen human face disease patients had ignored the warnings and snuck out at night to use fire and knives to burn and slice away their sores. Many of them mishandled the tools and lost too much blood, but they didn't dare tell anyone. They hid under their blankets quietly and died equally silently. Shilian had only just left the battlefield when he received the news. Standing before hundreds, watching those bloody, crying patients, he finally lost his temper. Why won't any of you listen to reason? Didn't I say that we haven't confirmed this method would cure the infection's root cause? How could you be so foolish? It was the first time he had gotten so mad in front of so many devotees, and the masses bowed their heads silently, afraid to speak. Shilian was so furious that he couldn't help but lecture a bit more. But as he berated them, someone spoke up unexpectedly. Your highness is invincible, so of course you'd call us foolish. But aren't our conditions so desperate that we had no choice but to try foolish methods? Although this individual didn't oppose him openly, his voice still dripped with sarcasm. Blood rushed to Shilin's head and he snapped. What did you say? That person immediately shrank back into the crowd and disappeared. Fang Shen was farther away and didn't hear, otherwise he would have cussed them out already. Mu Qing noticed that the mood of the crowd was going in the wrong direction and cautiously chose not to provoke any more outrage. Seeing that Shilian didn't actually respond, another piped up. Your Highness, if you can't save us, then we gotta save ourselves. Don't worry, we won't waste your holy medicine or spiritual power. It was hot blood that rushed up at first, but now Shilian felt immense cold. What the heck? Did I ever say using my holy medicine or spiritual power was the problem? Clearly, I only stopped them because amputation might not work. Why do they have to say it like I'm arrogant and only making empty promises? I can't feel their pain. But if my desire to help them wasn't sincere, why in the world would I give up being a heavenly official and bring trouble upon myself down here? He'd never been stabbed by another's words before, and he'd never been wronged like this. Thousands of thoughts filled his mind, but none could be formed into words. 
He knew this was all because he couldn't find the cure for human face disease, and his devotees were finally losing their patience. The suffering of these citizens was a hundred times worse than his own hardships. He could only clench his fists, cracking his knuckles. A moment later, he landed a sudden punch on a tree next to him. The tree cracked and snapped, making the people jump and ending their whispers. Only then did Function notice something wrong and rush over. Your Highness! Landing that punch relieved Shilin's fury and let him calm down somewhat. Yet in that dead silence, another person spoke up. Your Highness, there's no need for you to be so angry. Everyone here is a patient and we're all your followers. No one owes you anything. Once those words were spoken, many nodded to themselves. Although the voices were quiet, Shilin's senses were sharp, and he could hear every sound clearly. The crowd was grumbling. Finally someone dared to speak the truth. I've been holding it in, afraid to say anything. Didn't they always say His Highness the Crown Prince was a gentle soul? But I guess he's different in person. In that endless wave of talk, Shilian unconsciously took a step back. In his 20 years, he had never been terrified before any enemy. He had never been afraid. Yet at that very moment, an emotion akin to terror swept through his heart. Just then, he heard another person whisper. With such impressive might, why not go set fire to the enemy camps instead of making us suffer all these battles? Hearing those words, he couldn't stand there any longer. Of course he knew that he was now nothing like that sword-bearing, flower-holding, smiling, kind martial god on the altar. Shilian turned and ran, sprinting out of Buyu Forest like he was trying to escape. Behind him, Fang Shen and Mu Qing yelled, Your Highness! Where are you going? There was suddenly a disturbance in the crowd. It seemed a young member of the nursing staff had suddenly started beating up patients out of the blue, and now others were joining in the brawl. Yet Fang Shen and Mu Qing had no time to worry about them anymore. They called forth troops to take care of the situation and immediately ran after Xi Lian. His flight was taking him toward Beiji Hill. Every one of his steps carried him several dozen meters, and soon he came to the top of that densely wooded mountain. Shilin was seeing red, and he shouted into the forest. Come out! Your Highness! Function cried after him. What are you doing coming here? Shilin yelled to the sky. I know you're here, so come the hell out! Muqing shouted. If he came when you called, we wouldn't need to... He trailed off and fell silent. Behind the three of them, something made scrunching sounds. Whipping their heads around, they saw sitting upon a vine watching them was none other than that white-clothed creature, the left side of his face crying and the right smiling. The creature had actually heeded his call. Shilin immediately lost it at the sight of him. He lunged, crying sharply. I'm going to kill you! That white-clothed creature lightly and nimbly evaded him. His large white sleeves were like the wings of a dancing butterfly, elegant and beautiful. Function and Mu Qing made a confused noise and moved to aid Shilian, but they abruptly noticed something extremely alarming and halted, looking dumbfounded. Shilian, on the other hand, was filled with rage, noticed nothing. He unsheathed his longsword just as Function shouted, your Highness, don't you see? He... Shilin's hand was already around the neck of that white-clothed creature. The other hand held his sword pointed at the creature's heart. The creature was clearly at his mercy, but suddenly it burst out laughing. That laugh was sonorous and gentle, like the laugh of a young man. Shilin thought it sounded familiar, like someone he knew. But in his rage... He couldn't think of who that voice belonged to, and that sliver of confusion didn't last. Soon enough, the white-clothed creature sighed. Ah, <sighs> Shilian, Shilian. 
It doesn't matter how much you struggle, you're going to lose. The kingdom of Shenle is doomed. Shilian was furious and slapped him without waiting a beat. Who do you think you are? No one gave you the right to talk, so shut up! That was an exceedingly rude gesture for him. The head of that white clothed creature was knocked askew from the force of the slap, but he righted it again. Do you really want me to shut up? All right, all right. But you know, there is a way for you to turn your defeat into victory. It just depends on your willingness to act. If he hadn't added that last comment, Shilian would have ignored him. But with that, Shilian thought that, just maybe, there could be some truth to his words. That there was a way, but one with a heavy price. He forced down his fury with a deep breath. How? He demanded darkly. If you want me to do something, just say it and stop wasting my time. Come closer, and I'll tell you. The white clothed creature beckoned him. Fine, Shilin acquiesced. Feng Shen was alarmed. Your Highness, you're not actually... But then, Shilin pierced the heart of that white clothed creature with his sword. He leaned in close. Speak. With an exceedingly soft voice, the white clothed creature whispered in his ear, and no one else heard exactly what he said. Yet the longer Shilin listened, the more his eyes widened. After listening for a while, he slapped the creature again, unable to hold back. I didn't say to tell me this, he yelled. What I want is a solution, a cure. I did tell you, that is the way, the white cloth creature said. It all depends on whether you're willing to do it. Shilin's face twisted. What exactly do you want? Who are you really? The white cloth creature chuckled. <laughs> Who am I? Can't you take off my mask and see for yourself? Shilin had already planned to do just that so he yanked off the half-crying, half-smiling mask in a fit. The next second, he froze completely. Behind that mask, the one smiling at him had the fair and handsome face of a young man. His eyes twinkled with life, a smile curved his lips, and his expression was endlessly gentle and modest. It was his own face.